So your exam went very well. What do you think is your greatest uh, strength? My greatest strength would be my super grasp and semantics. And what do you think your greatest uh, weakness is? That would be my poor grasp and pragmatics. So can you give me a little example of that? Yes, I can. Semantics is the study of meaning of words, phrases and sentences. It tries to establish relationship between words and the concepts they represent and it tries to understand the use of language by the speaker to convey meaning. Uh, pragmatics on the other hand is the study of meaning in context. It focuses on the speaker and how he uses the context and background knowledge uh, to interpret the word and meaning in sentences. So the difference between semantics and pragmatics can be thought of as a difference between what is said and what is meant. For example, the phrase I am cold is a statement of subjective experience of the speaker. However, in right context, it could be a request to turn the fan off. So to dive deeper, uh, the difference between semantics and pragmatics can be better understood by using uh, sense versus reference. The distinction between sense and reference is a way of describing the relationship between the language and the world. Sense refers to the meaning or conceptual content of a word or an expression independent of its relation to the world. Whereas reference is the way in which an expression is understood by the speakers of a language and how it relates to other words and expressions. However, according to quantum semantics, there is no principal distinction between semantics and pragmatics. In fact, they can be thought of as part of a continuum. So how do we actually draw the line? Let's dive deeper. Cooperative principles are generally about cooperation with one another. When two people speak, we can presuppose that they want to cooperate in exchanging meaning with each other. This gets regulated using maxims of conversation. The first maxim is the maxim of quality, which means basically to tell the truth. Here we have Elise and Bob engaging in a conversation. Elise asks Bob, how old are you? And what does Bob reply? I'm 145, which is false. So he didn't apply maxim of quality properly. Next maxim is the maxim of quantity, according to which messages should be as economical as possible. That means explain the world with as less words as possible without hampering the delivery of meaning. Again, Alice asks Bob for age and Bob replies with a quite extensive arithmetic problem. Here Bob just violated the maxim of quantity. Third maxim is concerned with relevance which states that one should always reply properly and contextually to a speaker. Here Alice again asks Bob what his age is and he replies, I like cheesecake. The last maxim is Mather maxim, which states that one should give information in clear and orderly way without causing confusion. Alice again asks Bob what his age is and he replies, am I 23 years old or 243 months old? and when does life even begin? The idea is that following the maxims in conversation is natural and violating the maxim is often understood as intentional and meaningful. The listener is required to infer the speaker's intended meaning by drawing on background knowledge and context. The background knowledge can be culture or embodied experience. up the teleport between one place and another where would that be like your bed to five guys or where would you choose i'm sorry your <laughs> teleport your, your our bed to five guys yeah where, where it, like for me i would do my bedroom straight to a to five guys that's to where five, I what's watch. a five guys it's like a burger place oh <laughs> no not The semantic meaning is what the words mean. And pragmatic meaning is what the speaker means. The entire genre of humor depends upon using pragmatics.
115 miles per hour. I hope you have a good explanation. In fact, individuals with autism and developmental language disorders often struggle with pragmatic skills such as understanding and using nonverbal cues, interpreting figurative language, using appropriate register and tone, and understanding and following social conventions in communication.